discussion we had earlier on, the question that we had asked is, do you support the indefinite suspension of the signature collection drive, which was set to kick off today? That's the question we had asked earlier on. And uh, Jafeth says, yes, besides, you'll never know someone who knows someone who has never signed uh, with or without. This is a jobless Kenya. That's Black Masala who says that. We also have, uh, let me see, uh, Al who says, says, I support that postponement. I know they'll call me Tanga Tanga. And, uh, well, keep your comments coming as we continue with the discussion. We are with Kevin Osido, who's joining us via telephone link. Uh, we are also with Honorable James Gakuya, Member of Parliament for Embakasi North. Let me start with you, Mweshimiwa, on it looks like the President is really trying to ensure that all sides are heard because we do know that there are certain, uh, you know, um, proponents of the Building Bridges Initiative report who had said, let us pass it as it is. We don't have time. We've already wasted or taken two years uh, to have that done. Uh, do you f get the feeling that the president is trying to have everybody included with the latest development? Uh, let me say that actually, uh, if you can uh, read from what you call body language, uh, you, can just think, uh, you can just see that uh, there are some element of some uh, flexibleness. Because a president having a meeting with his deputy and uh, a result of a uh, post uh, uh, postponement of uh, that correction of signature uh, then comes after that meeting. Mm. It tells you that actually that meeting at least holds some water. It's like at least he was convinced that at least there is need to listen and allow those views that are locked out. Because mm. at the end of the day, this document, it will be authored and it is be, be an, a document that is interested is also cater interest of all Kenyans at lunch. And if it will cater for all Kenyans at lunch and you are rocking major major of them. We have seen governors having cocoons at Naivasha and Naivasha and coming up with with their views. We have seen pastoralists having their cocoons and coming with their views divergent views, and we have seen many, many other videos, including the church. That's a very big voice, and you cannot ignore these voices, because these are voices of Kenyans, and I would say this process should not be hastened as if Kenya is migrating, because this country is going nowhere. You, we have a document we, of which actually was programmated by Moe Kibaki, but still we, say, we are keeping on saying it has 20% element of some divergent issues that were, not, were, never, were never agreed. And if that was the case, why do we have another document and lash it, leave it with the divergent views of, of Kenyans, at the end of the day, we have another document with 20, other 20 or 30 percent not agreed by Kenyans, mm -hmm. which at the end of the day may be opposed wholly by the Kenyans. Mm -hmm. I would think that, in fact, if we need a document that is a document for all of us, let us incorporate everybody. Mm. Let us reason them. Let us also expand time to hear these, the, 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 these, these views. Allow this particular committee, which is the ex, that committee of that team of committee of uh, 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 building bridges, also to take care of that. Mm. And I think if the president has uh, heard from uh, the voices of those Kenyans, it is high time. He will take. Uh, he have to act. All Not right. surely, mm -hmm. he's head of state. One mm -hmm. that is. Let me say, Raila Odinga. Raila Moro Odinga is not a loser anywhere in this particular game. Because he's not the one who is ruling. Mm -hmm. But the President Kenyatta, the history will be written that actually during his line, he forced the Kenyans to a document that was not all inclusive, mm -hmm. and therefore his legacy will be dotted. Will be and dotted. therefore, mm -hmm. I would urge him to use that wisdom and give this country a document that's a document that can be acceptable mm. to all of them. To all of them. All right, um, Kevin, do you feel the president is trying as much as he can to ensure that this is an all-inclusive document to what we are now hoping that, as a country, it will be a non-contested uh, uh, you know, referendum? Michael, that should be the expectation. Actually, that should be the intention of His Excellency, the president, and the expectation of Kenyans. And remember that even in the composition of both the steering, uh, rather the task force, and then later the steering committee, we are told that both principals sat and presented names of individuals that they felt would speak for them, 
And uh, at that level, and at Bomas, you remember His Excellency the President saying that even his deputy was also part and parcel of those who made nominations of names of people to be seconded to the, to the steering committee, uh, rather to the task force and then to the steering committee. Now, what that means to me is that uh, the latest happenings, we should look at them at two levels. One, His Excellency the President, in my view, is interested in uh, a lasting legacy. And that legacy, he has continued to say, is going to be a legacy of unity. In, in as much as we continue to uh, say and insist that there are voices that were not heard, I think we also need to be honest and sincere with Kenyans and say that if you are not heard at the level of the first uh, document of the building bridges and then ultimately the, val the validation process, those are views that should be listened to. But in listening to these views, Michael, as I said and uh, continue to say, let people be uh, uh, progressive in their submissions, continuing to hit on the document and not presenting very positive uh, recommendations of improving the document is not going to help this country because I have listened to very many politicians, including various sector leaders, speaking about the document, but very few of them are presenting way forward. What is the, the way forward out of this and how do we ensure that these voices are actually also part and parcel of moving this country forward? And in my way forward, I think we need to also look at the roadmap that uh, has already been, been uh, been issued for part of which was supposed to be the launch of the of the signature collection and ask ourselves 2022 elections is coming here if we are going to continue to postpone these processes are we going to continue to see these politicians shouting uh, gallivanting up and down and messing up our economy because when rallies are organized in some of these towns business doesn't go on and it is the citizens that are actually hurting it is the young people that sometimes get, uh, when they fight each other, depending on which side of the divide they are supporting, it is these young people who are actually being used and some of them losing their lives. So in my way of looking at it, and the proposal therefore would be that the people who sit at the very closest ends of these uh, the political principles and in, uh, insofar as planning and organizing for this report need to give Kenyans a clear roadmap whether we are going to have a national dialogue conference where then everybody is seen to be part and parcel, where the deputy president and his people will also say, we are part of this, we have been invited, and we don't see people saying, I just, move, I just decided to go in. We were not invited, but we decided to move into a presidential function. I think a national dialogue conference, therefore, Michael, that brings together all Kenyans will be the best case scenario for me. And I think that would be a proposal that then needs to be, pro to be fronted and citizens need to be given an opportunity to be able to relate with the document. We are telling Kenyans to read the document, but they, are, they don't even have the copies. Is it therefore possible to have Kenyans inter, in, uh, um, integrate this document, mainstream it, mainstream it into their daily lives and clearly understand what it is talking about? That way I think it will be possible for us not to have sides, but to have a win-win referendum a referendum that therefore guarantees a united country for the legacy of, of His Excellency the President Uhuru Kenyatta. Michael. I will now need to conclude, so I'll start with you, Honorable James Gakuya, your closing remarks in regards to this and possibly what you see as the way forward. Oh, personally, I would urge that, in fact, this country is country for all of us and whoever is a Kenyan citizen require to have an opportunity also to be heard. Uh, let me say that we are looking for a document that will unite all of us. And if there were no issues with the current one, I think there could be no any idea of doing all this BBI process. Therefore, if there were some issues, those issues should be somebody addressed and therefore leave no gap that actually we will be having some, some, some element of uh, divisions on the, on, the, on the current proposal. And therefore, I would urge that the president's wisdom, uh, it is better that it takes him to a point of what I can call a universe, so that at least at that level, he can be able to invite everybody, as my, my good colleague, uh, my, my, my good uh, companion has, uh, has proposed, then we can have what we call a, a constitutional conference, a dialogue conference, invite the churches, invite all those bodies that seem to be left aside, including the deputy president of this country and his team, so that at least as we come out of that particular conference, we come as a one. If there are areas that we need an integrity, 
let them let, let them be at least be addressed and come out there as 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 a, as a, as a, as a collective document agreed. All right, all right, uh, Kevin Osido, your closing remarks. Uh, Kenya is bigger than any individual. Every day, as we wake up, each and every one of us is trying to make it, praying that God gives us the strength and the life. And I think the political class need to make it easy for every Kenyan to have their lives in a free way, a manner that guarantees prosperity, a manner that, that guarantees peace, love and unity, as is uh, uh, espoused in, our, in the words of our national anthem. And the politicians are only politicians because we have made them politicians. There is going to be a day when they will get back to us to want to be politicians and Kenyans. We will have that opportunity to make a decision. As it is right now, let's work towards building one Kenya a Kenya that we can be able to pass on to this and the, and the generations to come. All right, thank you very much. Kevin Osido, who's a governance expert, and Honorable James Gakuya, who is a member of parliament for Embakasi North. Thank you for joining us this morning and deliberating on those two issues, the Huduma number and also the Building Bridges Initiative report, which has been a bone of contention. Now, looking at other stories, imagine quitting a formal employment in a leading milling farm in Nairobi and going back to your home village to venture into herb farm. Well, this is Eunice Ngena's story of overcoming challenges and capturing Europe's bustle market. Four years ago, Eunice Ngena left her sales formal employment and went back to Utuneni village in Boni, Makweni County, to take up farming. In these greenhouses are the aromatic bustle herbs, an ultra niche and high value crop owing to its health benefits. This is a warm area, especially Basi requires a warm climate, so we thought this would be ideal for the Basi. And true to that, uh, the production has really picked on very well. Setting up the business from the word go had its own challenges. Starting was uh, the hardest part because uh, finding most of the information about export was not an easy way. Manufacturing around, I managed to get uh, some of the information that I needed to start. To export, you need to comply to a number of uh, standards, both locally and internationally. Uh, locally, you need to, to adhere to the government requirements for you to export. Internationally, some of the customers request specific standards. At the end of uh, 2017, it was initially setting up, and in 2018, we started now doing the, the actual farming. So in the same year, I decided to, to, to disengage from formal employment so that I can fully concentrate on the farm. Farming Basel takes patience and attention to detail, a process that begins with having quality seeds. We put them in this unit, uh, specifically Basel takes around three weeks. After three weeks is now we take them to the greenhouses. After about six weeks, the Basel matures and is ready for the market. After getting the produce from the farm, from the greenhouses, it's pre-cooled and then we bring it here on the pack house where we pack the, the produce. The produce is packed according to the customer specification. The foreign market of Basel in Europe came with its own dynamics, which she had to adapt to. Europe as winter and summer. During summer they grow their own crop and during winter they are not able to grow majorly because of the weather situation. So during winter it's our high season because we they are net importers. The farm is in an asshole area and within a rural setting which comes with its sets of challenges. Because this was a new crop when we introduced it here uh, we didn't have uh, red ready labor for, for the farm. And this is a crop that requires very specific temperatures. Uh, and even uh, when you harvest the crop, you have to keep it under refrigeration until it gets to the customer. Eunice says it is time for city dwellers to go back and open up the rural economy. So let's think of the rural areas. People need to come together because if you're doing it alone, it is challenging, but when you're doing it as a number of 
people, you find that you're able to overcome some of the challenges because some of the things you'll be able to pull together. The global Basel leaves market size is projected to reach $62 million by 2026 from $57 million in 2020 and the likes of Eunice are ready to have a piece of the cake. All right, and uh, with that story, we're going to take a short break right here on Morning Express. When we come back, we're going to be discussing black tax. And in case like me, you didn't know what that is, it's when you are the family automated teller machine, the family ATM. Once you get a job and, uh, you, you know, the family expects you to support them in one way or the other. It's somewhat our own insurance uh, company, so to speak. <clears throat> we're going to be joined by uh, Davis Okombo, who's a children's rights advocate, and also also, Gregory Ngugi, who's a psychologist, and uh, that's a discussion we're going to be having right here on Morning Express. So we take that break. When we come back, let's look at black tax.